for the development of Ukraine's economy. So I will start and I will be a moderator of this discussion and I'm Victoria Ptashnik and um, I am the people's deputy and uh, I try to promote the reform in this sphere of business competition and this is one of the directions of my work and I believe that anti-monopoly committee is the instrument that should develop economy and build good trade relationship and uh, they speak about demonopolization a lot now, but we are speaking actually about deoligization, and this instrument will help us to do this. Of course, we know that uh, the association agreement with the European Union, it is envisaged that Ukraine should provide adherence to the rights of economic entities that take part in investigation that are started by the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine. And I would like to point that, unfortunately, recently, I can say this honestly, that the previous members of uh, uh, the committee, they were not, their work was not transparent. Uh, they carried out more fiscal functions and not only budgets, but also some representatives of anti-monopoly committee, they aim to um, fine uh, the enterprises and they investigated these cases inefficiently and for a long time and they didn't clearly understand the violations, whether they were committed and also there are many procedural violations and abuse of authority and they didn't provide right to and didn't provide the access to the information to those entities that took part in these investigations. Also we know about many examples when the committee started cases and they took long time to be completed and at the beginning of 2012 there were some investigations of the in the pharmaceutical market and there was a case uh, there were cases against pharmaceutical companies and their distributors and um, the anti monopoly committee uh, members they now ch are changed but the case continues so there should be some limits, time limits, because we want that uh, these cases should be brought to courts. And uh, these entities, they cannot be under investigation constantly. They cannot provide typical information. And uh, this investigation, it complicates their activity and they constantly provide some re information on requests of anti-monopoly uh, committee and that's why we believe that this cooperation is not effective. That's why we want to pay more attention to all these procedural aspects and we want to state that as of today those investigations of violations in business and uh, competition, these rights uh, and the um, rules of these investiga investigations were established in 1994 and uh, maybe they should be updated. And I would like to note that we have uh, some representatives of anti-monopoly committee and I believe that uh, the acting members of this committee, they are ready to write new rules of game and to carry out investigation transparently and fairly. That's why we decided to work on the document that will provide the realization uh, of the rights of uh, the entities that are 
uh, connected with the investigation of violations and business commission. We are the, we have the association of um, um, lawyers of Ukraine, and uh, we want to carry out this uh, um, action. And the members are lawyers who specialize in competition, law and competition, and. Uh, they know about many details and also cooperation with the um, anti uh, cooperation with anti monopoly committee and this work has already been started and uh, now i would like to draw, draw your attention to the fact that we need to also um pay attention to some unfair competition because there are some cases that happened recently and uh, uh, I am concerned about this matter and the last information on violations that I saw in Poltavsky territorial unit. It um, started the case uh, in um, uh, uh, they uh, investigate the case of some packaging of some producer and they uh, uh, say that in this package there should be some it was th there was some action and there was some code in this package and uh, you should take it out of this package in order to take part in this contest and I don't want to um, uh, assess and qualify um, the violation in the activity of this enterprise, but I w want to say that the focus and priority of uh, anti-monopoly committee should be different. And uh, we have uh, uh, more important cases of violation, and and we and we uh, we are speaking about unfair competition. The anti-monopoly committee should not compare packages or think about their content. And um, they should pay more attention to uh, copying of uh, external look of the product or uh, copy trademarks and pay attention to more grave violations of um, uh, monopoly abuse and um, the, all these violations and compare, comparison of the packaging. They are not, uh, they do not. Um, uh, have so much effect on competition. That's why I believe that these violations, they should start not by the initiative of the anti uh, monopoly committee bodies, but uh, by the entities themselves. If companies believe that by uh, that action, their competitors, they made some violations, they should address to the anti monopoly committee. And I propose to raise this question, to discuss it, and maybe to introduce some legislative initiative in order to um, limit some uh, initiatives that are not, not appropriate to the committee. And I give the plot to the first deputy of Anti-Monopoly Committee, Maria Nizhnik, and uh, thank you for coming here, and uh, we would like to hear your comments uh, and um, uh, to be involved in the development of um, uh, the, these important changes in the legislation. Thank you. Good morning, esteemed colleagues. Thank you very much for the invitation extended to me because this is really a very interesting discussion and very topical theme because we are talking about the real rules of investigation, no violation of breaches to the rules of competition. This is a prerequisite of growth of Ukrainian economy. Um, besides, what we mean under the one is integral and efficient investigation. What uh, results we expect as just ordinary consumers or ordinary manufacturers, what would be the consequences for the violators, those who breach the rules. Uh, what we um, uh, receive of the um, anti monopoly Committee, AMK, when we introduce the system of efficient investigation of the cases. First of all, the consumers will get a very easy access to the commodities and their services, and high-quality ones. And they, they will save time and money uh, while uh, um, getting the same services or the services and the commodities of the kind they expect to have. 
what they need. Uh, they need the, uh, the access to different, the major assets in production, production in equipment, also facilitation of entering um, the different markets you know, for their products. What the way later we'll get out of that, we are talking about application in a way adequate, uh, transparent and expected, um, let's say, measures uh, associated with honest uh, competition. Um, in addition to that, the, the, the perpetrators will actually get all the necessary will be responsibility and we'll <coughs> get rid of those negative uh, things which actually we have today. What uh, AMK did or has done already in, the, in all those lines, uh, Victoria mentioned, according, according to Article 255 of the uh, Association Agreement and the Monopoly Committee in Ukraine, I have to uh, provide the legislation which may provide makes provision for the let's say transparent and removed consideration of different cases associated with such violations. That's why in the end of 2015, AMK actually came up with a project which, among other things, uh, makes provision for the shorter period of time consideration of different violations of this kind. Um, you're talking about the competition uh, regulations or the answer comes up with some of the rights and the the right to be uh, heard, the right to be, to have a chance to get acquainted with the um, different materials of this case if somebody is accused of such violation. And we hope that this draft law is going to be well considered. We will hear necessary comments, remarks, and clarification on the part of the experts and M&K personnel as well. In addition to that, as you know, all our actions now are, now well, today are public. We are, we are ready to publish any kind of information, any kind of decision, with the exception, of course, of the, uh, let's say, sensitive information, which uh, the publication of which may, may be detrimental to the economic entities. Also, in the end, um, in September 2015, they approved the recommendation nature clarification regarding the methods of uh, application of um, penalties and and of course mk and its uh, uh, territorial branches uh, pass all the decisions today and actually um, resort to different uh, punitive measures according to compliance with those methodological recommendations uh, this is uh, hasn't been provided for by the new legislation by MK almost on a regular basis. We actually established the Institute of Hearings. Today, a lot of uh, different decisions or judgments, especially if we are talking about those associated with abuse of uh, monopoly uh, police uh, situation, they are not going to be passed during one meeting of MK. In other words, the economic entities charged with the violation of legislation when they uh, launch the case for the uh, consideration of MK, they uh, have a possibility to provide all their explanations, all their counter arguments, and all the public authorized uh, persons uh, have the right or have the opportunity to ask any question in order to pass a really efficient, just, justified, and uh, um, integral decision. Also, introduced in the other last year a new institutional structure. We strengthened the uh, composition of the Department of Investigation of uh, uh, Violation Cases. Also, we uh, set up a new division uh, which uh, deals with the study of economic analysis. So today, the application specific of economic analysis, you are in consideration of the <coughs> violation of, um, case of violation of competition rules is one of the uh, things which uh, MK deals with. Also today we are going, we are considering some of the methods um, to be applied for some case of violation, including the methods to consider the cases about the, uh, the cartel um, uh, agreement during the 10th. Also we are working on, uh, on drawing up of different uh, draw, uh, draw, um, early state works. And starting uh, from May 2016, we are going to launch uh, the three year twinning project with the participation of the competitive bodies, represents of Germany and Lithuania. Uh, it consists of five modules. One of them is dedicated to the provision 
in development of the provinces consideration the case associated with the violation breach of legislation on um, the one is an integral uh, competition. I do hope that a lot is going to be done along those lines. We are going to adjust our practices to the best mode practices in the, the process which are you know, uh, on the way in the European Union. Uh, give the floor now to Alexander um, Wisniuk, member of the Board Committee of Co Competition Law, Iranian Bar Association. If I may, just immediately would like to pose a question. Are going to 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 drop um, those kind of uh, bylaws? Uh, uh, let's say or those procedures, the level of bylaws, or we need some amendments to be introduced about the the, the protection of um, you know, competition protection. What kind of changes or amendments is required, and what do we have to do in order to make provision for all those procedures? Thank you, Victoria. I think, and I am positive that if you are talking about the procedure um, pertaining to such serious investigations carried out by an anti-monopoly committee, must be regulated on the level of law, not at bylaws level. Uh, today, um, the, uh, actually, only we have a kind of superficial description in the law, I mean, of different uh, offices, which is not enough. Here, all, uh, we all are uh, witnesses, and this can be corroborated or confirmed, I know it myself, about the, uh, quite a few cases when MIK, uh, you are talking about the, uh, today's composition, is guided. But the principle, and they implement those principles not only uh, within, uh, oh, well, in the formal, uh, in the form of the uh, uh, exist right by law, but proceeding from the ideas and the spirit of those principles, which is very good. But when we are talking, when we say, uh, uh, when we mention provision of, uh, let's say, to, to ensure the principles of, of the just and fair process, and then it is obvious that we cannot only rely upon some individuals, individ individuals or the approaches <coughs> pursued or um, used by some of the officials. This is not sufficient in order to ensure the fair process. Uh, we need some kind of some independent of people or the officials, some kind of system which can guarantee uh, that irrespective of who is going to apply the system or use the system, then uh, we are going to obtain the very objective re and unbiased impartial result of the law. And, and uh, it is such system which must be created or should be created on the level of law. Um, uh, Maria Nizhnik mentioned that in the, uh, in the beginning of December last year, they came up with a quite good uh, draft law and association uh, well, it has been considered by the, uh, um, the, um, by, the um, by the stakeholders, and they p um, came up with their comments. In many of those, were taken consideration um, uh, and incorporated in that draft law. But it's obvious that we still have a lot of, of um, problems or issues not covered by this draft law, um, you know, which we're taking into consideration different approaches. And uh, can understand the law, which is uh, rather positivist or normativist, when the ideas or the, um, uh, the or the spirit of the law remain unknown to many of those uh, who apply this law, those laws, and that's why the procedure must be uh, very detailed, which is maybe not the best possible way. So, how to find this kind of gold middle, and how to? made those procedures to be both um, uh, transparent and efficient, it needs time. Uh, when we are talking about the association of the, um, of the legal officers, and actually uh, we came across uh, the situation when at the level uh, where, at which this uh, draft law was uh, prepared, we should not stop at that. We should continue to develop something. And again, analyzing the practices and what has been done during the 
uh, the, 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 our members of our committee and taking consideration the European Commission, uh, Commission and the respective departments of the European countries. Actually, we, we came up with the, another uh, version of uh, draft law which we plan uh, to submit for the public broad discussion in, involving MIK and business and uh, legal officers, lawyers, uh, experts. Uh, I believe uh, we'll be able uh, to cover to maximum possible extent or include uh, those issues which are instrumental in ensuring uh, the fair and just process. Uh, we very often talk about this topic, but we never, uh, not, not often we mention what is this problem all about. Uh, well, it's, it's rather simple to explain that the Anti-Monopoly Committee, by virtue of their institutional structure, considers cases and passes uh, decisions in one person, because MAK is a system uh, where assessment of the uh, sufficiency of evidence is uh, decided by the person who actually collects those evidences, which cannot ensure um, the impartiality of this procedure with, all, with due respect to those people who are going to work and um, actually and uh, um, they target the um, uh, actions on providing uh, those ev evidence. But um, the activities or the result of the activities um, is measured by the number of the relations it reveals. But from the very beginning, the MK, proceeding for their functions and activities, it is meant to stop, to put the barrier in the way of breaches or violations. Given all other equal conditions, the MK is going to gravitate anyway to say uh, that there is a violation in place uh, rather than to say there is no violation. So as the world experience demonstrates in the sphere of competition, this is not the best possible um, uh, way or not the, way, the best possible, let's say, situation for the law, especially taking consideration the the legal traditions uh, we have here in Ukraine. So the optimum option is when well, the same agents, the same body can uh, actually unite uh, both functions, but then this uh, immediately requires the establishment of some of the mechanism of counterbalance. And a mechanism of uh, hearings is one of those mechanisms. And today, uh, unlike the previous, well, what is hearing actually? This is the right of a person to convey uh, the message or to, to, to explain this person's com uh, position or stance to those who hear him. Because um, by virtue of his being interested for you know, in the results of his work, he, some, he or she does something which is not associated with the, uh, the goals, objectives of his or her investigation. That's why the decision maker must be, to maximum possible extent, be distantiated from this process, you know, to be impartial between the, those who are charged with something and those who accuse somebody of something, you know. And of course, if you are talking about these hearings, <coughs> If you do something about that, it to increase the uh, the chances for impartiality or based nature of the consideration. But even then, we have to make sure that we have kind of collegiate nature of the of this body. But sometimes a lot of different uh, issues do not um, allow those who are, uh, investigate the matters to uh, go into much details. Um, that's why in the European Commission and other agencies or bodies. As, uh, well, just to give you an example of what they do, just for you to understand this problem. As a tool and the mechanism of, um, uh, of uh, let's say, containment, let's say, uh, they, uh, they established the office of kind of uh, ombudsman or authorized person uh, in those issues, which actually is an independent expert, which has to say or who has to say whether the uh, the procedure was violated? Not then to report to those body 
uh, which is going to make the decision because it's obvious that, uh, let's say, the, the, those who charge somebody with something, they are going to uh, interpret the case in their favor and vice versa, you know, for the charged person. And the, the decision maker is very, it is very difficult for a decision maker just to devour 200 volumes of this or another case documents. And if, you know, and if there is an, ex an expert, independent person, uh, expert uh, you know, which can do who uh, can do that. This will help to ensure impartiality on the decision to be passed by the specific uh, board. Maybe we can introduce similar mechanisms. Why not? We should not be afraid of creating some new things, if if need be. We should not uh, actually uh, just sit on, uh, on our hands and uh, remain this, uh, in the status quo. Status quo. Maybe you are talking about some of the waiting mechanisms to be introduced. We actually, we come up with our proposal to do something about that. We're involving uh, experts and different other specials and representatives of the uh, Association of Lawyers. And we plan to have a uh, round uh, table with the uh, presentation of version, uh, one of the version of this draft law, with a subsequent uh, discussion, maybe in May next month. Thank you, thank you for your comments. Now I give the floor to Alexander Zavada, who is chairman of the Public Council uh, at uh, MAK. I would like to say immediately that Alexander is the ideologist of drawing up of the uh, competition on procedural code, if I'm not mistaken, and also creation of the uh, competitive uh, courts. Uh, my question is, uh, are we apt, you know, in order to start, can we start uh, this, the work on this kind of code, which I mentioned before, and um, uh, whether Ukraine is ready to set up uh, the above mentioned course, which will give us an impetus to more uh, efficient and higher quality development. Uh, we are talking about such uh, complex cases in the, uh, the defense or the protection of competition. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, to start with, um, I would like to say that despite uh, many ideas which are being considered today, and they continue to uh, submit them regarding the further perfection of the institutional uh, basis. And uh, you are talking about the investigation of cases. In its base, in its, uh, from, uh, let's say, in its essence, the, um, the, uh, the, this, the, uh, the program um, adopted the uh, case based on the principles mentioned before. We are talking about transparency, impartiality, professionality in the system of um, counterbalancing. Uh, the matter is we, st we still have some room to, uh, for perfection, but the, f let's say, the uh, fundamental level, the uh, basic level works today. And they mentioned already uh, some of the uh, basic rules, which just became then just rules and regulations. And, but they were based on the same principles, and it was done uh, actually intentional by the, uh, the MIK when they actually studied all the existing uh, global and European practice in this sphere. It's, uh, it's clear that the uh, issue of competition um, is, uh, is in the interest of the whole society, and it's necessary that the competition rules not only be observed, but be uh, consciously uh, observed and be comprehensive, understandable, and they ca can become cons understandable only when the decision passed by M uh, uh, the MK would be just and impartial, fair. Uh, one more thing, the, the factor of legislation is uh, one of the factors, is a subjective factor. Uh, that is why uh, even we come up or have the most high, highest quality legislation anyway, the requirements for the professional level, um, we were talking about composition of the MK, is still um, uh, uh, remains very important because and, uh, and, and despite the fact that this respect legislation was considered to be one of the best in the world, not always it was applied in a very fair or adequate way. We have to uh, to keep that in mind. 
However, uh, the, the anti-monopoly uh, legislation, uh, competition legislation, uh, over since 1992 when they passed the first law, they uh, actually went through the the road of revolution, sometimes evolutionary uh, development. And the revolution step was the adoption in uh, 1992 the law on competition, which actually replaced. Uh, the law on um, uh, on limiting or the, um, of uh, monopolism when we uh, switched over from the monopolist economy to the market uh, economy and the development of competition and protection of, of competition became the main major objective not the uh, not combating monop uh, monopolism uh, then uh, after, immediately after we adopted the law on uh, protection of competition we start to think that despite the fact that the new law makes provision for some of the of the interim or temporary rules, first they were on the level of the uh, bylaws, but they were one of the basic which provided or based on the principle of impartiality and transparency, but we could, um, we could see that this is not enough, that was not enough. Why not enough? Because if you're talking about the cases considered by I would consider, to, let's say, um, uh, with application of the administrative uh, legislation procedures, the uh, authorities, the powers given to the MK are sufficient if we are talking about this respect to investigation of the cases. But what if when we are talking about some kind of the secret cartels, we have to, uh, to know today that the MK uh, the, uh, doesn't have the required authorities. Uh, to deal with, we had some criminal violations related to the um, uh, secret cartels, and they actually uh, tried to establish some of the practice of interaction with the law enforcement bodies. But anyway, the practice accumulated by other countries demonstrated that the MIK must have their own uh, authorities and powers in order to have the right, let's say, to collect evidences in different places, including the uh, private property, uh, housing. And here uh, the question arises, in order to get those, obtain those authorities, we need a serious procedure and strengthen the mechanism of counter um, action. Um, and answering the question whether we are prepared to the, to the competition procedural code, Unfortunately, I have to say, not yet. Why? I can explain that because we have to adopt, first of all, the law on, um, on the collection of the evidence or the right to collect evidence uh, by uh, MIK, which would authorize uh, them to get those evidence anywhere and uh, um, anytime, like the raid at dawn, dawn raid. For example, in the early hours of the morning at 5 uh, a.m., for example, when nobody expects this kind of uh, visit. That's why new authorities, uh, powers, and more serious procedures to be in place. And they will uh, enable us to, uh, to have some practical experience. I really regard the code very seriously, and code must codify. But in, before that, uh, those, uh, let's say, regulations might be, must be provided for by law. If, if they are not there, we have nothing to codify. We have to bridge that gap now. And uh, yeah, we're moving towards uh, openness of Ukrainian economy and the, the regulation actually uh, even more emphasizes the need um, for doing something. We're talking about competition in, in case of such uh, violations and the uh, secret cartels, for example. If you're talking about the competition patent court, which could consider all the cases uh, related to to the application of the competition law and the cases uh, associated with intellectual property. We are talking about the practice of some of the European countries. I believe in the process of the judicial reform, we could have a chance to implement this idea because today, hypothetically, technically speaking, there is uh, the basis uh, for considering by the judicial um, uh, establishing three courts actually in Ukraine to take care of those cases. And if 
if we, um, if we succeeded to introduce this kind of specialization, this would increase the quality of the uh, um, judicial judgments or court judgments and will allow us to put the end to the discussion which has been in place for two years now. I mean whether we have to to, to, uh, to entitle the courts to reconsider, or let's say, to establish the size of the penalties, which before that was the authority only of the MK. So we are talking about now the situation. Um, we, we, we do not have the lesser quality of the legislative acts, and the lack of practice does not allow us on the eve of the judicial reform to pass such decisions un uh, reservedly. Though we consider those uh, issues at our committee and the members of the uh, parliament, of uh, MP, they, uh, they mostly think that today economic courts uh, can pass or can make uh, relevant uh, decisions, but there are some of the uh, reservations because they have then, in this case, to, to fulfill the functions of the MAK. There are uh, some other procedural things which I would like to emphasize and to uh, comment on. We have a good law on um, ensuring the uh, transparency in making decisions by MK, but another thing should be added to that. What I mean to say, when the MK uh, considers that uh, publication um, uh, of some of the materials of the cases or some uh, part of the uh, ruling would be detrimental to private interests, for example. Today, uh, the MK cannot publish such a decision. I believe we have to introduce the European principle when the committee has to, uh, to, to ensure the balance between the social and private interests. And if the social interest dominates or prevails, despite the, uh, the fact of uh, being detrimental to private interests, in this case, we have to publish those decisions, make them public. And this also requires perfection of the uh, 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 structure of the MK per se. Uh, adding to what Alexander mentioned, I would like to, to echo what he said, to mention that uh, I have a proposal to be added to their uh, um, draft law. You were talking about the collegial bodies which uh, authorized not only to make decisions but also to carry out investigations. Um, we need a more, a more profound uh, distribution of authorities between those persons who pass decisions, make decisions, and those persons should not have any influence on investigation. Uh, and the investigation part of that. Um, and so we have to introduce a certain, um, um, let's say we have to, to, to create some uh, certain additional offices and the, um, the, the personnel which would ensure the procedural independence of such officials who that can be the head of the, of this uh, structure or his deputy, you know, we have uh, we are thinking about creating uh, the, the office of this, um, uh, uh, the secretaries. I believe that this could be uh, one, uh, an additional lever which would add to the confidence uh, and trust in the decisions of the past or made by the MK, especially when we are talking about draft laws which would uh, give to MK more or new uh, uh, very important uh, authorities regarding the, um, the collection of evidence and the uh, investigation, etc. In what Maria mentioned, and they will provide access to the material uh, cases. In those, in those cases where the social interests prevail, the MK uh, must have the uh, authorities either they close the, 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 the access or vice versa. So this general principle must be a kind of major, major um, uh, principle for those old draft laws. So the public council, I remember, under um, K uh, was, has been always active in discussion and adoption of new uh, draft laws, and they came up with very interesting proposals which were 
they have been taken into consideration. I believe this is going to be our joint um, public initiative and everybody will be involved. I would give the floor to Sergei Denisenko, representative of the Foundation of the Stable, uh, Sustainable Development of Ukraine. And immediately my question, what actually, uh, very briefly and in very simple language, what would we like? What would we like to imp further improve in procedural issues, and what uh, it uh, would offer to business? I've gone to have some results. Thank you. Good afternoon. Firstly, uh, this problem of administrative procedure. Uh, the co uh, committee deals with, uh, we should look at in a broader sense, if you look uh, at statistics of anti-monopoly committee and um, uh, the uh, cases uh, uh, in courts, uh, the percentage of um, decisions for the um, but, uh, for the decisions of the anti-monopoly co committee is high and it doesn't mean that uh, Anti-monopoly committee is right in all the cases, and uh, please uh, uh, don't uh, uh, blame me on this, but uh, this shows the complexity of um, the current competition law, and uh, uh, that it it is difficult to uh, deal with this law. So there should be specialization in courts and judges. Uh, who will deal with these cases because uh, uh, these are difficult matters and um, in order to understand them, you should have proper experience. So the cases of anti-monopoly committee and also and appeal against these decisions. These are very important issues uh, before the court hearing happens. So. Uh, what are the main issues that um, the business and the other stakeholders are interested in? These are the issues of access to the materials of the cases that are reviewed in the committee. And uh, uh, some uh, participants who are uh, accused of uh, violations, they don't have opportunity to see those evidence on which um, anti-monopoly committee ground uh, its accusations. So uh, they, are, uh, they get opportunity to see these materials only uh, when uh, uh, the court asks uh, anti-monopoly committee uh, to provide materials for review. So um, they should provide um, uh, proper grounds to prepare their positions and uh, uh, to be ready to defend their positions in the case. And uh, sometimes there is access to the materials and uh, there are a lot of volumes, maybe tens or hundreds of volumes of materials and the representatives of uh, the economic entities, they address the committee uh, to um, look through these documents. This request is usually uh, is usually satisfied, but uh, the problem is uh, of documenting and fixation of these documents. Uh, you cannot copy them uh, because there are, for example, 200 volumes of this case, and you cannot uh, copy. It's impossible to copy all the materials. So they should have the right uh, to uh, see the documents and the evidence, the materials of the case on which the Anti-Monopoly Committee uh, builds its uh, uh, case case and uh, also the terms of the uh, uh, case um, hearing uh, and uh, they um, firstly provide um, preliminary decision and then final decision is provided and there are a number of cases that are reviewed by the committee for years and uh, the decision is not uh, taken and these issues are important at the stage of administrative procedure and also 
in order to provide the equality of rights of the participants and the competitiveness of the process. And also we should uh, focus our attention um, on the change of paradigm in the um, anti-monopoly committee and uh, also uh, these persons that take decisions uh, the um, you know there is a classic uh, uh, citation uh, from soviet film that uh, uh, ruins are in our heads so it means that we should provide fair and uh, opportunity to review decisions by the committee and it takes time and effort in advocating such issues by the committee and by the public. Thank you. Uh, you uh, said about copying and uh, I remember that I, uh, they prohibited to copy and I had to uh, right, um, to, uh, and uh, if they allow to copy, it's okay now. So, and now I give the floor to Marta Kuzmin, Senior Economist Center for Economic Strategy, representative of the, of the animation package of reforms. Marta, I would like to ask you as an economist, uh, how do you assess the uh, activity of our department if we compare uh, the activity uh, uh, its activity with uh, the same departments in other countries and what should we improve here in Ukraine in order to provide best practices of uh, uh, investigation of violations and business competition thank you Victoria please show the slide As economists, I am the only representative here. In order to assess effectiveness of the work of Anti-Monopoly Committee, we decided to compare key indicators of Ukrainian Anti-Monopoly Committee and the Anti-Monopoly Committees in other countries. The number of personnel in Ukraine, these are more than 600 and uh, 36 workers, that is uh, two times more than in Turkey or Germany, and even three times more than in France. At that, if we look at the uh, annual budget of our uh, department, it is 10 times less than in that uh, countries. And we clearly understand that economic situation in Ukraine is different than in other countries, but if you look at these two indicators, we may say that if we um, reduce personnel and uh, uh, will um, have the same budget, we will be able to increase salaries and to motivate people to work in the anti-monopoly committee more effectively or to increase qualification of the people who stayed uh, for these resources. If you look further at key indicators of the work of anti-monopoly committee, for example, on concentration, we see that uh, such applications on concentration for the last year there were uh, 658, and this is the biggest number comparing with all these countries except Germany. From this, um, uh, they uh, sent uh, 75 cases for additional investigation, and that is even more than in Germany. From these 72 cases for which they spend the money, time, personnel, they have a lot of personnel, they got positive decision. So anti-monopoly committee spent resources ruling by uh, it was ruled by law but there was a positive decision that's why this resources uh, should not have been spent if we reduce the number of personnel but first we should uh, change the legislation norm and uh, to have less case for uh, investigation and uh, less personnel working in anti-monopoly committee also uh, coordinated actions in Ukraine 
there were more than 500 cases and in Germany these were eight cases and there were 80 individual persons and uh, uh, here in the stable we can see that fines that were applied for this violation was 100 times less than in Germany. So there were eight cases, but there were real cartels, and we have a lot of cases, a lot of personnel, and but the results are not good. Also violations in uh, monopolies and uh, it is more than in other countries and comparing Ukraine with other countries we may say that there are some um, opportunities to increase effectiveness of anti-monopoly committee and we as economists that do not clearly understand all the nuances of our legislation this improvement can be in two uh, areas to improve legislation and to uh, increase institutional capabilities of anti-monopoly committee. Uh, so uh, my colleague spoke about legislation, but I would say it's okay that we have it. It corresponds European norms and it is progressive, but it w if we increase the threshold and after which the Anti-Monopoly Commission should review other cases, maybe it will improve the situation with the effectiveness. The Anti-Monopoly Committee itself should come up with proposals and um, uh, methods and to show how they are going to work with risk management and what cases are appropriate to be considered to have fewer cases but to have more effect uh, and to improve the situation in the competitive market of Ukraine and to use uh, this small budget of anti-monopoly committee effectively and uh, uh, this budget only uh, is provided to the anti-monopoly committee and this budget is rather small so i showed the um, our work uh, concerning the uh, activity of anti-monopoly committee and we as a center we see this direction of work in the anti-monopoly um, uh, sphere this is only one um, factor of uh, the policy because we have also natural monopolies and ma um, adjacent markets and there we also have problems and we have and our re legislation does not allow new enterprises to the market and this is the barrier for uh, entering the market and also we should follow other countries and should have uh, um, competitive neutrality when state and uh, uh, private enterprises follow the same rules and uh, Using this opportunity, I would like to invite everyone for, to um, participate in roundtable next week, and we are going to speak about four directions of competitive policy. And uh, I would like to say about the indicators in cases on concentration, and we adopted the law. This is uh, draft law was initiated by me, and in May it will be uh, uh, come. Uh, it will come into force. It was signed by the president, and uh, we increased the indicators, and uh, uh, and also we introduced the mechanism of official consultations, and we provide the business with the opportunity uh, to address to uh, um, um, anti-monopoly committee when they apply. They. Um, uh, will 
ask what is wrong with the documents and what can be done in order to reduce a time needed for this. And uh, starting from May, the Anti-Monopoly Committee will be uploaded with those um, cases that do not have uh, uh, influence on competitive market, and we will have some positive results in this sphere. Thank you, Victoria Yurina. The threshold are increased, and this releases uh, additional resources. And uh, also, I would like to say about the situation that was last year due to devaluation, our um, uh, threshold, they uh, exceeded those th that are established in France. And uh, uh, we cannot assess effectiveness of the control and concentration um, uh, as uh, um, comparing the number of um, uh, requests. Uh, because uh, there are no such full entrepreneurs who create monopoly with uh, 50 percent and will write uh, uh, the, uh, uh, to the anti-monopoly committee. So there are no such claims. They do not exist. And in what case the committee uh, takes negative decisions? or with some reservations when there is uh, uh, it is difficult to understand whether it is 34 uh, percent or uh, less or more and what will be the attitude of the committee but in other cases uh, there are no such um, instances so these thre uh, thresholds they reduce the monopolization of the economy and it doesn't depend on the number of negative uh, decisions of the anti-monopoly committee and the second issue about the comparing of the case that are reviewed by the Anti-Monopoly Committee and in other countries. The matter is, in Ukraine, we have one um, difficulty that is called the problem of uh, uh, cave capitalism. Uh, these bodies that should regulate economy, they just um, they just produce corruption. They didn't um, uh, fulfill their functions uh, uh, and uh, different commissions on consumer right protection and other groups. We in our markets, they, uh, we have not fair competition, unfair competition prevails. That's why uh, competition, uh, quality competition in the market, it is really low and should we should correct the situation. And several weeks ago, we renewed the work of uh, uh, state uh, consumer uh, protection service and uh, there were 70 percent of their products. Uh, it is marked, uh, they, uh, for example, uh, say it is butter and this is palm oil. Um, and uh, they uh, just confuse uh, the uh, consumer and there is total monopolization and they abuse this uh, monopoly status and um, uh, anti-monopoly committee uh, you, you as an economist, you should pay attention to these issues and we will fight uh, together with these um, instances and those bodies that have regulatory capacity and uh, the government, they shouldn't cancel the authority, the power of these institutions and to renew uh, cave capitalism, but uh, there should be coefficients of uh, the assessment of quality of uh, bodies and if they work, uh, n their work is not satisfactory, uh, all uh, people from these bodies, they should be fired and new people should uh, take uh, office. So if we could assess the quality of work of these organizations, so we could improve the situation and there will be a few uh, less work for the anti-monopoly committee. They will just work in the framework of the authority and uh, according to current legislation rules. So anti uh, the anti monopoly Committee has a lot of uh, work and uh, they are obliged to do this by law, but maybe we should change these rules because uh, 72 cases are reviewed and in uh, big countries such as Canada, three cases. Uh, so maybe we should identify diff uh, other limits, other uh, indicators. So maybe we should uh, continue our discussion uh, next week uh, in the course of the next roundtable. And uh, uh, today we discussed uh, the f fair and efficient investigation of violations and business competition. And uh, 
all the lawyers, all the civil society representatives and all those who specialize in this sphere, we uh, propose to submit their proposals and after um, May holidays we will finalize our legislative initiative and to carry out broad consultations and uh, discussion and we hope to see this initiative registered in the parliament uh, 